In this video tutorial, we're going to start to look at some more advanced statistical techniques. And in particular, what we're going to look at is how we can investigate or how we can evaluate the spread of our data. Now, what we're looking at on the screen here, on the right hand side are three equations that relate to discrete data. Now, those three formula, the first is for calculating the mean of the sets of data. The second is for calculating something called the variance. And then the third is for calculating something called the standard deviation, which tells us about the deviation of our data from the mean value. Now the scenario that I've set up here is for 820 ohm resistors. Now when you purchase resistors, they come with a tolerance. So you might buy a batch of 820 ohm resistors, but not all of those resistors are going to be exactly 820 ohms. And in this test, we've taken a sample of 12 resistors to find out the actual resistance for those resistors. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to find the mean average of all of those resistances and then we're going to look at how spread that data is. Obviously the more spread that data is, the greater the band of tolerance is on those resistors and the narrower the spread of data, the lower the tolerance is on those resistors. So first of all, before we can do anything, we need to calculate the mean resistance for all of these resistors here. And the way that we calculate the mean, if we refer to our equation here, is first of all, we need to add up all of the pieces of data between i equals 1 and i equals n. Well, as we can see here from our list, we have 12 pieces of data. So we need to add all of the pieces of data up from piece of data 1 all the way down to piece of data 12. Now, if you were doing this manually without the use of formulas, then all you would do in your calculator is add all of these resistances together in order to find the total. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a formula. So I'm going to click on formulas at the top. There's one called auto sum. Auto sum means auto adding. And if I click on auto sum, what we see here is it highlights all of those resistances. If it had highlighted the wrong columns, then all I would need to do is manually highlight those resistances. And then I would hit enter and we see at the bottom column there, it's added all of those resistances together to give a total resistance of 9853.7 ohms. Now, once again, if we refer to our formula on the right hand side, once we've added all of those X values together, all we need to do is divide by the number of pieces of data. We covered this in an earlier tutorial, but multiplying by one over N is the same as dividing by N where n is our number of pieces of data. Now we've just said there that we have 12 pieces of data. So what we need to do in order to find our mean is divide the 9853.7 by 12. And I'm going to do this down in the bottom here for the mean average. So I've got equals the 9853.7 divided by 12, which gives me a value of 821.14167 or 821.1 to one decimal place. So next we're going to calculate our variance. And if we look at the formula for variance, we notice a couple of things. The formula for variance and the formula for standard deviation are very similar. In fact, the formula for variance tells us that the variance is the square of the standard deviation. The symbol for standard deviation is down here in the bottom formula, sigma, and variance is just sigma squared. So we calculate the variance, and then when we square root the variance, it will give us the standard deviation. Once again, we can see that because if we inspect the formula for variance, we've got 1 over n times the sum between i equals 1 and n of x minus x bar all squared. And if we look at the formula for standard deviation, it's exactly the same, except it's being square rooted at the end. So what we need to determine first of all is xi or our x values minus the mean. So xi minus the mean. And all it means is each of these resistances in our table minus the mean of 821.1416. So I've created a column for that. I've got x minus x subscript m. I've called my mean x subscript m, whereas in these formulas it's x bar. And the only reason I've done that is because it's simpler to include that notation in Excel. So X bar is the mean, X subscript M is also the mean. In the formula here, XI is the piece of data, and in our table of values, XI is each of these individual resistances. 
So if we do the first couple of these, we've got x minus the mean, and the mean is 821.141. Therefore, the difference between the 822.4 and the mean of 821.1 is just 1.3. I'll do a few more of these manually and then I'll show you how you can do this using the functions in Excel. So we've got equals the resistance value x or xi minus the mean value 821.14. I'll just do one more manually equals the resistance minus the mean. Now once again if you wasn't using Excel you could do this manually on your calculators and just write down the tabulated results. The advantage of doing it on Excel is what I'm about to show you is that you can do all of these calculations in one go. And the second advantage is that you can eliminate any rounding errors. So the way that I'm going to input the formula this time is equals the resistance cell A6 minus the mean cell 821. But what I want it to do when I paste this formula down is I want it always to look at cell B16. So I use something called cell reference where I put a dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the 16. What this means is when I paste this formula down, the A6 will become A7 because it's not absolute cell reference, but the B16 will remain as B16. So when I paste this down, the next cell would show equals A7 minus B16, which is what we want. We want the A7 resistance minus the mean. And then when I paste it down again, it will equal a8, which is the resistance, minus b16, the mean. So I'll paste these down. That absolute cell reference is a really useful tool in Excel, and we will be using it again. So now, in this column, we've basically got the deviation of each of those values from the mean. So this one here deviates from the mean by 1.3. This one here deviates from the mean by minus 2.5, and so on. So in our formula for variance on the right hand side, we've now calculated xi minus x bar for each of those pieces of data numbered i equals 1 to i equals n or i equals 12. We can see next from the formula that we need to square each of those values. So I've added a column for x minus x mean all squared. Now once again I can do this with a formula because in the column to the left I have x minus x mean. And all I need to do is square each of those values. So I begin every formula with an equals. I click on the cell which I'm going to want to square, the cell containing the value for x minus x mean. And to square a value in Excel, we use shift 6, that means to the power of, and squaring is to the power of 2. So in this cell it says equals b3 to the power of 2, or b3 squared. When I paste this down, it would say equals b4 to the power 2, or b4 squared, and so on, all the way down to the bottom of the group. So I'm squaring all of those deviations from the mean. And I just need to set that to, let's say, two decimal places for now. So although Excel is displaying two decimal places, there will actually be more decimals along here that aren't being displayed. But whenever we reuse those formulas or those values in the cell, Excel is going to use the full value, not the rounded value. So I'm going to paste this formula down, and then I've got a column for the square of all of those deviations. So if we refer back to our variance formula, I now have xi minus x bar squared for all of those pieces of data. But what I need is the sum of all of those. And then once I've got the sum of all of those, I need to divide by the number of pieces of data again, exactly the same as I did when I calculated the mean. So I'm going to sum the square of all of the deviations by doing formula, auto sum. And we can see here it's adding all of the pieces of data that I wanted to add. And it's going to place them at the bottom of that column. Okay, so the sum of the square of all of the pieces of data gives me 127.37. Okay, so the last thing that I need to do in order to get the variance is multiply that by 1 over n, which is the same as dividing by n. And our value for n is still 12. 
So I've set up some cells underneath here for these. So our variance then is the sum of all of the x minus x bar squared values, which is this cell here, the 127.37, divided by the total number of pieces of data, which is 12. And that will give us the variance for our data. Now, as we said right at the start, our standard deviation is just the square root of our variance. So in Excel, we need a formula and we need to square root the variance. So we're going to do equals. And the command for square root is SQRT. So we have our square root and we want to square root the variance. So I'm just going to click on the cell with the 10.614 in. But you could also input that manually and it would give you exactly the same result. I'm going to click on the cell, I'm going to close the brackets, hit equals, and our standard deviation for that data is 3.26 to two decimal places. Okay, so just a quick recap, we calculated our mean by adding all of our pieces of data together, and that gave us the value at the bottom of the column with all of the resistances in. And then we divided it by our number of pieces of data, which was 12. And that was as per the formula on the top right hand side there. Next, we calculated our variance, and there was a couple of steps to this. First of all, we had to do each of those pieces of data minus the mean. So we set up a column to subtract the mean from each of those pieces of data, the 822.4, the 821.2, and so on. And we calculated the deviations from the mean. Once we had the deviations from the mean, we squared those. And the reason we square it is to eliminate any negative numbers. So we see here, when we square minus 1.8, we get 3.39 and so on. So the square of all of the deviations from the mean are all positive values. We then had to sum all of those because in our variance formula, it wants the sum of the square of all of those deviations. And then the last thing that we needed to do, once we had the sum of the square of all of our deviations, is we had to divide by the number of pieces of data again, which was 12. So our variance was our 127.37 divided by 12. Then the very final step for calculating our standard deviation, once again referring to our formula, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. We square rooted our 10.614 and we got 3.26 to two decimal places. Whilst you can do this manually using a calculator and a, and a hand-drawn table, as we introduce more and more data it becomes a lot simpler to use the functions in Excel and it's also useful to eliminate errors which is a big advantage.